Hey, what's up? In this video, I want to go through some methods I used when making this castle in Blender. And here's the scene. But the first thing I did was uh, just collect a bunch of references. And the main one, or the first one, was just the castle in Resident Evil 8, which just looks really cool. Uh, but then I tried to find similar ones from real life, and I don't know where this is from, but I was mainly looking at this one in the beginning, and then I also looked a lot at this one, and you can see that it's quite similar. So yeah, that's it's good to always have references, and yeah, if you ever get stuck, you can just look at, okay, how did these guys do it? And you can take some inspiration and uh, yeah. But then I just uh, started modeling. It looks like a lot, but it, it kind of isn't. Uh, the first thing I did was like this little roof here, which uh, yeah, from the references you can see like I wanted a lot of these like spiky sharp roofs, so I just made one of those. I mean I can show you how to do it. It's it's uh, pretty simple. I just brought in a cylinder like that, scaled it on the x axis or the z axis I mean, went into edit mode and made some loop cuts like that, and I selected this, the top face, and then I activate proportional editing and I can turn on screencast keys and yeah I use this one root that uh, that gives me the shape that I want so if I scale and only on the z-axis actually yeah on the x and y axis only so if I press shift z that's what's gonna do that and by scrolling you can decide how much is affected but we want everything to be affected but then you get a little cone like that and you could also just use a cone i guess yeah i just wanted it to be slightly curved like that so that's one way to do it and then you know the rest is pretty basic modeling but i want to show you one method that's nice to get like detailed modeling which is good for especially like old school or like ancient architecture type stuff so you can check on this kind of ring thing here actually I didn't use it on that one but on these windows you can see these all these little edges and stuff there's a really easy way to do that so let's bring in a yeah, let's bring in a cube put it over there and select that face and if you press ctrl B you'll get a bevel if we add some more loop cuts by scrolling up and then go here in this menu and usually or sometimes it's like minimized like this but then you can just press that and uh, you'll get this and then you can go to custom here and you'll get some options this one's really nice it's called concrete molding and it's just you know some nice little detail that looks kind of cool if you add some more you know loop cuts it'll be smoother but uh, you kind of want to be careful so that it doesn't uh, become too high poly 20 is usually good enough uh, might be too much even but yeah somewhere around there and uh, you could even make your own little shape here just to get some cool details so that's just a nice way of getting detail and one thing I pretty much always do is set it to auto smooth and then add a bevel modifier and then I go into shading and select harden normals so that it's smooth but it's also not too smooth if you know what I mean and it's usually I don't know 0 0.01 or something and uh, yeah I just think that looks good and yeah those are pretty much the two methods I used just a bunch of bevels and then just basic modeling extruding it's really not that hard and I have like two variations of towers it's this cone shaped thing and then this like kind of big Ben looking thing and the house I mean this is just a cube with a pointy tip you know and I have one window model that I've just copied around and uh, this as you can see there's like yeah the bevel and then three array modifiers just to get this pattern here I guess it, there's this thing as well but yeah it's also a very basic model it's just a matter of adding enough detail so that it looks okay pretty much and yeah this thing as well but uh, yeah it's all pretty basic modeling and if you have that bevel method it's easy to get like detail like I said the next step was to just uh, decide on a camera angle or camera placement and this is what I landed on. It's like uh, from ground level and looking up a bit but uh, that's pretty much what I always do and then I start arranging because as you saw like it, it, this doesn't make sense like there's a tower flying here and here 
and back here it's like weirdly clipping and stuff but it doesn't matter because you can't see that from this angle if it was a video game you know it would be a different story but uh, I'm just making a picture, you know, and then I just, you know, took this model pretty much this cone shaped thing and uh, copied that around and I parented all of these objects in this little tower piece onto that empty and then I could just go here in the outliner tree, uh, select hierarchy and then copy that around, which is just a nice and easy way to do it. And I used alt D to copy it so that it's a linked copy and that doesn't like add any new information to your project file it's just like a it's a cheaper copy basically uh, which just makes uh, the viewport run better and like there's less risk of crashing i guess so then it was just a matter of uh, arranging this so that it looked nice pretty much the next thing i did was texturing i'm here in material preview which looks kind of whack but uh, if you look on the edges here it's kind of hard to see in the final render even but i have some edge wear and i learned that from max hay he has a great video on that but it's uh, using ambient occlusion and what you do is you check some boxes here so that you can get like a mask that only affects the edges of objects i'll just link that video instead he explains it very well uh, but it's a cool way to getting you know some extra detail on your texture and the base texture is just a material from ambient cg it's like a tile stone tile texture and it's free so yeah, i did some ambient occlusion on the edges like you saw and then in the creases uh, you can see here this these spots are a bit darker that's uh, also ambient occlusion and then you can see some like grunge here some patches of a bit lighter material and for that i used a noise texture to mix in uh, some like another picture which is just a picture i took of like a rock or something which is also a nice thing to do. You can just go out in nature, take pictures of rocks and then use them in Blender. But yeah, like you see here, this is a mix node. I know like, I'm not gonna go through this entire node setup. I'm just, yeah. All of these methods are described in the Max Hay video. So I'll just recommend watching those. But yeah, that stone material is used for everything except the roof, which is, you know, pretty much the same thing. I just got a, a roof texture from ambient CG and then mixed in some brunch or some rock material, you know. After that, I just added some trees from Botanic here. And then I have some Max Hay models as well, some fantasy assets like these pillars and these little things. And I have a cube that covers the entire scene. It's just volumetrics, which you probably know what that is. But yeah, density is pretty low and anisotropy is 0 0.7. But then I also have another volumetric cube that is like a bit more misty or like it's supposed to look like mist or like smoke almost. And if we look at the render view, you can see this uh, smoke stuff going on. And uh, yeah, that's just a volumetric cube that I cover. You can see it like it covers the lower part of the scene. And it's also a volume scatter node. The anisotropy is zero, but then I have a noise texture. And these are the settings if you want to copy them, but uh, it's going to be different for every scene, depending on how, how detailed you want the smoke to be and how you want it to look. But it goes into a color ramp and that goes into density of the volume scatter node. And what that does is it makes the volume a bit more varied. There's like little lumps of smoke. It basically has noise in it. If you know what a noise texture looks like, it does that, but in 3D instead of on a texture. But yeah, just give this a try and you'll see what it does. But it's it's a nice way of, of doing that. But uh, yeah, those are the few little tips I wanted to show you. Hope you liked it. I didn't go into too much detail, but uh, I don't think I needed to because like, yeah, it's, it's all pretty simple. It's just a matter of spending time on it. The overall, like the little steps are pretty simple. You just need to do them over and over and then you get a castle basically. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.